now I want to go to Tom Farrell, who is starting a new portion of Scratch Building His Layout for us tonight. Tom, welcome. Thank you again for having me this evening. Um, I have a new series. Uh, I'm calling it Completing Shantytown. Basically, it's to uh, encourage me to finish this section of my layout and um, do it by the end of the month, <laughs> roughly. <laughs> so I'm diligently working on um, the actual shanties for the town. And this evening, we'll show you how I did this one on the left. And then uh, next week, these two on the right. And there'll be a series of others. Um, this evening, I'm also going to give a little overview of uh, what exactly is a shanty town. And uh, another name for them is Hoovervilles. Um, so just bear with me here. There's only a few slides. Uh, the Great Depression basically ran from 1929 to 1941, and uh, a lot of people say that World War II got us out of the Great Depression, but it was a very terrible time to live. Um, any of you that have, I don't know, parents or great uncles or great aunts uh, tell you just how terrible it was. Um, Many, many people lost their homes and uh, during the Great Depression. And they moved into these towns called, they created called Hoovervilles, which was sarcastically named for Herbert, Ho Herbert Hoover, who was the president at the time. Um, and you can just see these are, uh, although terrible, they're a modeler's dream. And uh, I've been making mine purely with scraps from my uh, scrap bin. So not unlike the people that are making these, uh, I'm using scraps as well. Um, a lot of these shanty towns are right on rivers, riverbanks. So the residents would have access to water and they were constructed out of miscellaneous lumber that people could find, tar paper, tin, sometimes glass, but I mean, there's all kinds, there's even canvas here. Um, yeah, they're truly, truly shanties. And um, this was a color photograph that I found that, uh, that just gives you an idea of the scale of these shanty towns, these Hoovervilles. And um, from a modeling perspective, um, you know, I'm going to model a section of this, not prototypical, but I want to achieve this look in shanty town, um, and that's my uh, my goal. My railroad is um, set in 1930, which is about the worst of the Great Depression. That was about the worst, as bad as it got. And I already have certain sections of the layout where I have a abundance of uh, hobo camps. This is one. For example, maybe people recall this, this abandoned freight car um, theory in this little scene is that these hobos, these homeless people basically strip this railroad car down to build this shack here. So it's the same color wood and those that are perceptive pick up on that. <laughs> um, there's another area of my layout that shows a uh, individual cooking a hot dog on a fire in a in a in a drum. He's living in this tent, um, and here's yet another area. So I'm trying to faith faithfully represent 1930, and of course, properties down by the railroad tracks aren't exactly prime properties. So that's why I'm featuring a lot of hobos, bums, uh, these camps all over my layout. Um, which leads me to the scene Shantytown, which is still uh, suffering from the pink foam syndrome, but I'm committed to finishing this scene by the end of the month here. So this is an area to the left is my covered bridge, to the right is my John Allen uh, engine house. This is right in the middle. I envisioned uh, a three structure uh, building here and 
quite honestly, Santiago Pinata motivated me to do this scene. He doesn't know it. <laughs> I thought sculpture here. <laughs> and in my head, I have a vision of a little sculpture that could literally be picked up and put on a coffee table. That, that, that was the motivation for this anyway. So thank you, Santiago. <laughs> Hope you like it. <laughs> um, I took that template and I cut it out, or put it on a piece of plywood. I built everything on plywood and uh, cut the plywood out. And then I, this is early in the fit, but I wanted to fit, have it fit flush against the backdrop. And then I was going to uh, next add plywood to build the structure up. I want to have a wall uh, because you have railroad tracks here. I didn't want the uh, the uh, three houses, if you will, right up against the track. I wanted them elevated. So I came up with this deal to uh, basically elevate the three buildings. Uh, you'll, you'll see as it develops. When I build things, I always build to square. Um, it's a good practice to make everything parallel and perpendicular to one another, it makes things fit better. So I'm constantly using my square and cutting things to square. And as you, you'll see how this comes together, but this is the base of the uh, first structure. And there's a plywood, basically floor. There's the construction. This is just plywood I got from um, Hobby Lobby. Comes a little package. It's really inexpensive. The <clears throat> and I did a test fit. I keep through the whole process. I'll keep putting this module up against the uh, backdrop in its place just to make sure it it looks correct. And there's the other two. Um, and I wanted a change in elevation here. So to add visual interest to my quote unquote sculpture, I just didn't want it, a series of flat planes and boxes. These are, um, you'll see, um, these are random pieces from my, uh, I have various boxes and this is a box called retaining walls. I will go back and add sculpt -a mold in here and blend in these various different pieces with sculpt -a mold and moss and weeds and dirt. And uh, this will be one of the last things I do, but this, I had to build this up first. This, this will all match, uh, it'll all work together. It'll all be blended in when I'm done. And there's the first structure going up. Um, that's Monster Works uh, laser etched brick, and that's a grant line door. And again, these are just scrap pieces. This is second building. This is something I've sketched in the uh, cutout for the door. When you do work with clapboard siding um, and you want to put uh, I'm going to have a deck on here, for example. You can't just put the 2 by 8 or 2 by 12 across this clapboard siding. You have to cut it out. So the first thing I do is I go score this with a uh, ruler and an X-Acto knife, and I make these little cuts, you know, just straight line cut, deep enough to just cut the clapboard out. Then I go back with this uh, special blade that I've ground that... Uh, and I pry these little pieces out. And then I've cut this channel in here. Then I typically go back with a file and file it flush to the base material. And then when you lay that board in, this is the board for my eventual decking, it fits flush. Same is true with the outline of these doors where I'm putting in this trim. I'll cut the clapboard out so that these trim pieces will fit flush. And there's the model coming along. Of course, like everything I do, there's no plans. There's just an idea in my head and we just go for it. <laughs> Kits be damned, right? <laughs> Here's the third uh, building coming along. And 
the whole key to this, what's going to make it really interesting to the eye, is the total variation of materials. We've got brick, we've got uh, siding, we've got clapboard, we've got more siding, we've got stone, brick, concrete block, another type of brick, another type of stone, a wood um, retaining wall, another random cut stone, another dry stone. Everything looks different. So to the eye, it's all visually different. This one won't, this third building won't have a deck, but it does have a bump out. And uh, that's pretty much uh, the basic structure there. Um, now I began painting it. And um, I actually started with blue, yellow, and, and green. If you mix blue with yellow, you get green. This ensures that there's some continuity of colors here. This is just um, a brick red. These I wanted a different color brick reds here, so they didn't all look like they came from the same paintbrush. These, again, are all base colors. This is just a base gray, dark gray, all base colors. Next up, I added alcohol washes, and uh, I started with some pan pastels. You can see how that changes dramatically. See how light that, I didn't like the look of that. It looked too white. So I put a gray blue alcohol wash on there. And then I went, when it dried, I hit it with a lacquer. And then I hit it with a black alcohol wash and I achieved a big difference in the color there. This originally, this middle one was that magic elixir made of vinegar and a dissolved steel wool pad. Um, and then I went back and I colored it with yellow or painted it with yellow paint. Then I did a test fit to see where we are. I started on the porch, the decking here. I'm coming up with some idea here. Uh, we'll get to that later. <clears throat> There's up close of the decking material. See how we use that footer board across. Then I had this revelation that I'd make it a condemned building <laughs> on the spot. So uh, I started putting boarding the windows up. And it led to this. This is more or less the finished, almost finished uh, building number one. I put one online and I found these all these condemn signs. I brought them into PowerPoint, printed them out, and uh, put them all over the building. I'm pretty proud of that roof. That's one of the nicest roofs I've ever done. Well, that looks like hell, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, it looks... Uh, it looks exactly what it's supposed to be. These I made myself. I printed these out of, uh, I found some shingles. I co colored them green. This is tar paper. This is just wood that I, it's just a very nice look, you know. And I put it up there to see what how it's coming along. This will be the concept of, um, you know, the level, level of detail that I'll go to on this thing. It's going to be a real standout model. <clears throat> There's another up close with additional weathering. See the boards there. I went in with a black magic marker. I'm going to tone this down a little bit, but I I looked at this left photograph and I thought, you know, it has so much detail on it, I should put the nails in. So I, I don't normally do that, but I put some nail holes in there. I'm going to go back with a dental tool and I'm going to poke these holes and put a little with a very fine brush, put some rust color on there. So I've got another evolution to do with this. But um, I just thought this model deserved nail holes. I don't always put them there. There's standing back where it's going to go. This was last week's uh, model. There's that outhouse that you'll see next week. Um, this whole section will have. Um, will be the shanty town. Um, so that's what I've got for you this evening. Yeah. It's going to be an exciting four-part series. Yeah. 
Fantastic. It really looks great. It really does. I think you're really capturing the feel. 